Hi, I'm Robert Byrne from the Deutsches Herz Centrum in Germany. We're pleased to be here again at the ESC 2011 in Paris, France, and I'm delighted to be joined uh, by Dr. Laus from Hamburg Saar, who's just presented some very interesting results from the uh, Hamburg Cream and Sugar Study. So, uh, Dr. Laus, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Maybe you might give us a little bit of background to your trial. I mean, we're all familiar with certainly lots of data on uh, LDL, HDL, cholesterol, but perhaps uh, less on triglycerides, and in particular the issue you addressed of uh, a so-called triglyceride intolerance. Can you give us a little bit more background to the trial? Well, it's really driven by the clinical problem of triglycerides. We know what we have to do with high LDL cholesterol and low HDL cholesterol, but there's a great uncertainty whether fasting triglycerides are markers of cardiovascular risk or really risk factors, whether we yeah. should lower them. Um, and the recent guidelines of the American Heart Association and the European Society of Cardio Cardiology are also not sure. So there's this uncertainty. This is the background of the trial. And there is interesting epidemiologic data who um, has shown in epidemiologic studies, the Women's mm. Health Study or the Copenhagen City Heart Study, that in primary prevention, non-fasting triglycerides predicted stroke and myocardial infarction. On the other hand, the uh, fasting triglycerides were not predictive. And from basic studies, there is evidence that after a meal, the postprandial um, triglyceride-rich lipoproteins may be arthrogenic because they are taken up rapidly in the subendothelial space and their lipolysis uh, products may be toxic. So indeed, um, it has been suggested that um, postprandial triglycerides are arthrogenic and many years ago, it has been said that maybe atherosclerosis is a postprandial phenomenon. Hmm. So triglycerides are regulated, um, not only by the time and the type of food intake, but also very importantly by glucose metabolism. Hmm. So this is why we designed a, a study uh, in a way that has not been done before, where we looked at both uh, glucose tolerance, testing it with a, mm. with a formal test, and mm. also for the first time in a larger cohort of patients used a triglyceride tolerance test. Okay, so certainly an interesting hypothesis, an area which we don't have a whole lot of data at the moment. Um, tell us a bit more about the specifics. How did you test this hypothesis? What methodology did you use? What load did you challenge the patients with? So we looked at uh, patients with stable coronary artery disease documented by coronary angiography. Um, they received a standardized meal at 6 p.m., fasted overnight. We took blood in a lying position at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then they received 75 um, uh, grams of fat in 250 ml of cream. So basically it's a drink of cream. And okay. then we subsequently took blood samples. And after three hours, we did a glucose tolerance test with 75 gram of glucose in, in to also test uh, glucose tolerance. And in those patients with now a known di diabetes, we only performed the triglyceride tolerance test. Okay. And then we followed these patients and we reported the 18 month follow up on our primary composite endpoint, which was the combination of cardiovascular death and cardiovascular hospitalization. Okay. And what did you find then when you looked at this primary endpoint? Well, first, when we look at the total cohort of patients with coronary artery disease, and 95% of those are on statin treatment, um, there was no relation of postprandial triglycerides with uh, our endpoint. Okay. Fasting triglycerides co correlated, especially the highest tertile. So if someone has triglycerides above 150 milligrams of deciliter, he had an incre increased risk of cardiovascular events. However, in the total cohort, this association was rapidly lost in multivariable analysis. So just adding, for example, uh, age and gender or HDL cholesterol uh, into the equation, um, the significance was lost. Okay. So but on one level, you're a little bit, uh, you had expected to find more of an association with postprandial uh, triglyceride levels than with fasting levels. But like you say, the association with the fasting levels then uh, after multivariate analysis wasn't uh, significant anymore. Right. But interestingly, um, when we looked at glucose tolerance, um, yeah. we saw that there are marked difference in triglyceride kinetics in patients with normal glucose tolerance and patients with impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes. And patients with um, uh, diabetes have higher fasting triglyceride levels and higher postprandial triglyceride levels. Mm. But interestingly, um, in patients with normal glucose tolerance, 
both fasting triglycerides as well as the postprandial triglycerides predicted cardiovascular risk. However, in those with diabetes, despite the higher baseline levels, there was no further prediction of cardiovascular events by triglycerides. And in fact, this was uh, robust in a multivariable Cox uh, regression analysis. So if you have a patient with normal glucose tolerance and coronary artery disease, and the, in the highest tertile of fasting triglycerides, with what, with, which was above 150, um, uh, the risk in was increased by threefold, and if he has a high postprandial triglyceride, the risk was increased by fourfold. Okay, so then, uh, in summary, then there seemed to be an association uh, with outcomes uh, and postprandial uh, triglyceride levels in the patients with normal glucose exactly. tolerance, despite an overall negative uh, result for this association. Is that fair to say? Well, I think the most important point is that we have to look at metabolism in a comprehensive way. Mm. And we have to carefully assess glucose tolerance if we want to evaluate triglycerides. Okay, good. Um, as a final question then, do you have any plans to uh, investigate further in this area or have you got any ongoing work um, that we should look out for? Well, we will follow this cohort. There are several interesting questions, for example, of those patients with normal glucose tolerance and high triglycerides, if they are more prone to develop diabetes in the future. And secondly, of course, uh, patients with normal glucose tolerance and high triglycerides would be an interesting population uh, to test whether a triglyceride lowering intervention would be of benefit. Okay, well, I think uh, all that remains is for me to congratulate you on an excellent study and to thank you for joining us today. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. It was a pleasure, thank you.